Hi, I'm the Now Visitor, and you are watching Trek Culture. We've got a new trailer. Yes, we do. Star Trek Discovery Season 5. Sob, the final season. The trailer has just dropped. It has even interrupted me as I was spending time in this wonderful library of books and things. And, and I mean, I'm all right. Listen, I'm, I'm at this cool guy's house, and he's really nice, really. And he's just let me sit in his library. So thanks, Stefan. OK. With that in mind, here's everything you missed in the Star Trek Discovery Season 5 slash Final Season trailer. Our opening shot shows the Discovery A, naturally, while there's a voiceover from Burnham saying it's been a hell of a journey. And obviously that's going to be the main theme now going into this season. Although we know that it wasn't written as the final season, unfortunately the cancellation has therefore made it the final season, this trailer has obviously been put together with the knowledge that it's going to be the final 10 episodes. We have some absolutely glorious visuals going on in this trailer. We have that lovely shot of what appears to be maybe a star base or Cloud City or something sitting in that nebula, which was just like, I mean, I mean, have you ever looked at Discovery and gone, nah, that's ugly? Because I haven't. It is a beautifully put together show. One that I have to say has got better year on year and year as well. We then, of course, cut to a shot of Discovery outside Federation HQ. Now, I really like this one. Even if it gets reused a few times as a few different sets, I've just got something in my eye there. But yes, we see surrounding Federation HQ, the ships that we're expecting to see. We see, obviously, Discovery. We see a Neo-Constitution class. We see a Credence-type vessel. We see, yes, I wrote them down. No, I did not learn this. A Courage-class ship. We see a Friendship-class ship. And we see a Marion-class ship as well. We then get some voiceover from, of course, our... I think you know, at least equal lead, who is of course Saru. Now we know we have, well I suppose you could say we have inferred from different interviews, from different statements that Saru, rather than being a captain this year, is an ambassador. And we get a lovely shot of him in his new ambassador garb, where he's with, I, uh, in fact in the last video that I did, I wrongly addressed Tarina as Ambassador Tarina. So let me set that to right right now. President Tarina of Navarre. And they look like they're very happy together, which I always just love to see because Saru deserves happiness. We see that Saru and Burnham are on an away mission to an alien planet. Now, my first glance, I thought, you know, oh, this is Saru in the ambassador garb again. But actually, when you combine it with a shot later on in the trailer, it looks like at least here, Saru is in his lovely traditional Starfleet away team gear, which is nice because obviously, you know, Ambassador Saru, delighted. But I'm enjoying the fact Saru's still part of the gang and still part of the crew. We then get a quick voiceover from Dr. Colbert saying that we've always been able to find answers together. And we get plenty of shots of everyone in this trailer, but I do like that we seem to be continuing with Colbert's going on away missions as well. Uh, I do love that from season two onwards, his role just seems to be getting bigger and bigger. So hopefully that is a trend that will continue on into this season as well. Speaking of continuing into this season as well, we we, we obviously we knew this was happening. David Ajala returns as Book. Now our first shot of him sees him standing in the shuttle bay of Discovery, surrounded by lots of cargo. You've got that lovely big open door at the back that gives everybody heart palpitations when we see it. Please, for the love of God, don't run out of power. Because they seem to be in orbit of a ringed planet, or at least that's the, that's the idea that I get in the background there. We have apprehensive looking Burnham walking up. So I suspect that this might be the first meeting of theirs in season five after everything that went on with the 10C and, and everything their last season. So I'm interested to see how that initial meeting goes because if we're to believe the rest of the trailer, they're going to make up pretty quickly. And just in this section of the trailer, last but not least, is of course Tilly, who seems to be full-time back on board Discovery. Now, I'm delighted about this because I thought it was a fabulous move to have Tilly become an instructor at the Academy, but also double jobbing exists in the 21st century. So I'm sure it still exists in the 32nd as well. Um, and I'm also saying that because I do want Tilly to be an instructor in Star Trek Starfleet Academy as well, because I'm really not ready to say goodbye to any of these characters. Wait, you see, now that I've said that, they're going to kill them all in episode one. We're going to follow another ship for the rest of the season. On board the bridge, we see obviously Tilly is there. Burnham is about to take the captain seat as well. 
crucially, Linus is back for season five. And I don't know where I'd be without that lovely Saurian. So I am delighted, delighted to see him again. And it's a blink and you'll miss it moment, but you see Callum Keith Rennie's Romulan Captain Rayner standing on board Discovery as well. So remains to be seen yet, you know, is, is he going to be a bit like Saru was in the last season? Will he be a, another captain on board the bridge but they're in an advisory capacity? Back to double jobbing again as he's splitting the week between himself and Burnham while she's off on away missions? Don't know yet, but delighted to see that. I think we're going to get a lot of him. There is, I think my favourite line from the trailer is it's Burnham and Saru and Burnham goes, last dance, and Saru goes, I shall follow your lead. And I just, they, Doug Jones and Swanika Martin-Green are so good together that I am just, give, please give me as many scenes as possible between these two, just please, just for me. It wouldn't be Star Trek Discovery without galaxy ending stakes, uh, although this time, Maybe rather than Galaxy Ending, it's just Galaxy Spanning, because Kovic, played by a returning David Cronenberg, says that the greatest treasure in the known universe is out there. So, I mean, of course, because, you know, it was, it was hardly going to be a phone charger lost under the bed. So you have Book and Burnham silhouetted on this alien world again. Can't price the visuals enough. And we get our first shots of Mol and Laak. I'm excited to see what these two bring to this season. Are they out and out villains? Well, for a bit more exploration of these characters, check out our recent interview with Elias Tufexis, who of course plays Laak in season five. I think that there's a lot more to these two than meets the eye. Cue the Transformers team there. They are, whether they're speaking to a vendor on an alien world or they have someone who just specializes in ancient artifacts, they bring what appears to be a puzzle box to someone who, if you look very carefully, is wearing a jacket so similar to what Cyrano Jones was wearing in Trouble with Tribbles or Worf was wearing in Trials and Tribulations. Uh, just like how many pockets, like there's so many pockets you wouldn't even believe. I was immediately distracted by what was sitting on that desk. My friends, Isolinear chips and a self-sealing stem bolt have survived until at least the 32nd century. And I'm very, very happy with this because quite frankly, the self-sealing stem bolt is one of the best pieces of, of, it's just such a catalyst for everything. I bet that's it. I bet it's hiding in plain sight. That's the greatest treasure. There you go. Everyone go home. We've solved it. Opening this wee puzzle box, now you have to really click. I, I, maybe I'm assuming correct here. It does look like it might be a book and that ties in with just a, a few scenes later in the trailer, there seems to be this enormous library. Y you see why I'm sitting in front of this now? Okay, right. Uh, but it does seem like there's a massive library that they're going to visit. And also, I mean, frankly, I'm just delighted that there's still books in the 32nd century. Whether that library is on the same planet that you've got Culber, Book and Burnham reacting to something overhead, who knows? Maybe it's a decloaking library. Oh, I'm here for that. There's obviously a lot of investigation going on because you see Book and Burnham are obviously trying to find more of that particular writing. Now, we saw that in the recent post poster that was released. You have that ring of writing. You know, we have all sorts of theories as to what that might be. Again, check out that video there from the other day. Uh, it does seem to be adorning the box that Maul and Lack bring to that vendor. So everything seems to be tied in together, naturally. There's a quick shot of Tilly in what appears to be a Zahian disguise. So I think that would be, thematically, that'd be quite lovely because of course it is via Tilly that we were first introduced to the Zahians in The Runaway. Uh, bring back the short treks. Now we then get a little sequence that sees Maul and Lack beaming aboard what, I might be totally wrong here, what I'm taking to be a Romulan vessel. Now we know that things are going to kick off aboard a Romulan scout ship from the 24th century, which obviously has drifted somewhere for a, almost a thousand years. Obviously, the interior would skew closer to what we're used to seeing in Star Trek Picard and Star Trek Discovery, which I think at this stage, I just sort of accept it. Um, but what's very interesting is where they go next. We have a quick scene of what appears to be Laak, Book and Burnham in a basically a shooting match, but Freeze framing, as we like to do, reveals a couple of very interesting things about this locale. Just behind Burnham and Book's head is a display graphic that seems to be displaying a Constitution-class ship 
from the 2350s, what we're used to seeing in Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Don't know if we're gonna, if this is gonna involve time travel, but there's more. There's a quick shot of La'ak just before he detonates this massive explosion in space. If you look just over his right shoulder, there's a display that shows the Mirror Universe Terran symbol. Has this ship, this specific ship, hopped both universes and time? If that's the case, now what's a Constitution class ship that we know was operating in the Mirror Universe? Obviously, if we take Mirror Mirror, there's the ISS Enterprise, so that's a thing. Could this be the Defiant? Could this be a full circle? If you'll recall, in the Tholian web in the original series, the USS Defiant, Constitution class now, was vanished by the Tholians. Nobody knew where it went until In a Mirror Darkly, that fabulous two-parter from Enterprise's fourth season, which showed that the Defiant, in its original appearance, was sent across time, so there's the first instance of it going across time, and universes to the Mirror Universe. Now that, of course, giving an awful lot of power to the Terran Empire, setting up the events for the Mirror Universe for season one of Discovery and so on. There would be quite something special about having a full, 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 full circle moment of having the Defiant reappear again, presumably in the 32nd century, as I say, because the ship has moved through time already. Uh, and also, we know from what we've gone through with Philippa Giorgio, we don't want biologics to go through time and universes. It doesn't end well. Obviously, I have no way of knowing if this is the Defiant or not. The only thing that makes me reasonably certain that we're aboard a Constitution class is that display graphic, and there's a blink and you'll miss it moment a bit later on where Maul seems to be very much standing in sickbay, uh, the set that we would recognize from Strange New Worlds. So, thanks for that mystery. What the bloody hell are we going to do with this? Now, we're not even halfway through the trailer yet. Right, okay, quick succession. When Lack detonates that thing in space, it cuts to Rainer screaming. He doesn't appear to be having a very happy scream. So, perhaps was someone who was near and dear to him involved in that explosion. We get a quick shot then of Reno along with Adira reacting to something, holding this awesome little engineering toolkit because of course she would why, why, why wouldn't she there's a nice kind of take a breath moment where burnham seems to be jumping through either low gravity atmosphere or perhaps it's just slow motion and then it cuts to a nice let's fly we then cut to something that appears to be you know let's take time out for a motorcycle chase uh, it doesn't seem to be, I, I thought, is it a race? But no, I think it's actually a chase, because then it comes to they're getting fired on by a ship that's taking off from the planet. Uh, and it looks like someone smashes straight into a rock as well. So uh, Bagsy, not it. Uh, we get shots of that same ship that we saw in the clip that was released quite a while ago, the ship that Burnham is tethered to that's traveling at warp. We get another quick shot of that. Pretty much safe to assume that that's Lack and Maul's ship at this point. Lovely shot of a Wasikon sitting there in her yellow uniform on the bridge. More of her, please. She's awesome. We have what seems to be Discovery flying through some sort of, uh, I'm going to say mycelial network that's on fire. Doesn't mean it is the mycelial network. I just, I got that kind of vine vibe from it. So, um, who knows? They could destroy the mycelial network again. I mean, it's the final season. They can do whatever they want. Cut back down to the planet that we previously saw Burnham and Saru on. A four-eyed statue releases what appears to be probes from the eyeballs. Um, and although it looks nothing like it, when I think of multi-eyed anything, I think of the OG image of Saru. Um, just to, you know, put that nightmare fuel in your head. And this is where we get that image of Saru in his away mission gear being shot at. You hurt Saru, I'm coming after you. There is a beautiful shot of Discovery flying past a black hole in the distance. And then we get something that just throws everything to a bit of a spanner. Because we get a gorgeous, like, really quick pull-out shot of Starbase 1. And it's not Starbase 1 from Strange New Worlds, it's the one from Discovery. I don't know what to do with this information because this throws my ship moving through time, not people moving through time theory in a bit of a loop. Because I doubt Starbase 1 still exists 
in the 32nd century. Um, and if even if it did, okay, maybe, maybe it did. Maybe it's off sitting in the distance somewhere. Who knows? But, so we know there's scenes that are set on a disco era constitution class. We now know there's at least a shot where we ascend from Starbase One, the one that we saw in season one of Discovery. We also know, and very big thanks to our friends at Cinema Blend, and particularly Mick Jost for this one, that the short trek Calypso is going to be addressed in season five, finally. But that's crucial to know because in that short trek, we see Discovery that has been abandoned for about a thousand years, but it's the discovery of seasons one and two. It's not Discovery A. So now that we've seen other ships from that era, that opens up the box even more as to what it could mean. Whether, yes, are our crew traveling through time, which would be nice, I guess, to get a little bit of closure, you know, meet some families, or is time meaningless, or is it all going to tie in to the temporal wars? And I just from saying that statement, I know that somewhere Chris has just had a shiver run down his spine because they, they must address this. The worry being because it wasn't originally written as the final season, who knows if we'll get the closure that we want on it? Who knows? Just to close out the trailer, we got a couple more shots. One on a planet where Buck seems to be running away from an alien that really reminds me of the one that chased Kirk in the J.J. Abrams Star Trek 2009 on Delta Vega. We get a shot of Burnham sort of float falling through what I took to be the library. So now I'm just thinking of, you know, that scene from Interstellar. And it closes out with shots of Burnham with some of our favorite cast and you know, so it, it, it's it's just it's just lovely. Particularly that last shot is Burnham and Tilly embracing. Uh, and if that was the last shot of Discovery, I, I they'll hardly put the last shot in the trailer. But if that was the last shot, I'd be like, yeah, Tilly was her first friend. I, I, I get that. And then of course we just see Discovery flying towards this sand planet on which so much of the earlier stuff seems to be happening. So that's it. So that is the trailer. And I would imagine. I mean, we're sitting here. It's the end of February. It debuts April the 4th. I think this is it for trailers, folks. So let us know what you thought. Let us know if you picked up on something that perhaps we missed here. Drop it into the comments below. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Uh, you find me at Sean Farrick on the various socials. You find Chris at Edit Chris Edit on the various socials. And of course, please do follow Trek Culture on Twitter, Blue Sky and TikTok at Trek Culture. We're on Instagram at Trek Culture YT. Are you looking forward to the last season? Are you excited for it? Are you like, ah, good riddance, give me... Uh, 10 more of these are the voyages. Who knows? I'm super excited and I'm looking forward to joining ye as we're going through all the ups and downs as well. Until then, look after yourselves. Make sure you live long and prosper. You're awesome. You're wonderful. And keep telling yourself that because you kind of deserve to hear it. Thanks very much, folks. Bye.